Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Crystal and this is Bond Book Reviews. Today we are going to be talking about all the books that I read in the month of February. As you've probably already seen, if you've seen my pick pong, you will know that I failed my month of February. So I unfortunately had to take a punishment for my March pick pong. I will have it all linked if you want to go check it out. But today we're going to talk about the, month, the books that I did get read in February. So for... The non-pick pong books, which we'll start with, I read Hideout by Jack Heath. If you have watched my channel before, you will know that I am a huge Jack Heath fan. I will shout it from the rooftops. This is the third book in the Timothy Blake detective series. He's an FBI consultant who eats people, effectively. He's an FBI consultant who has a deal with the FBI that if he helps them solve crimes, that in exchange he can have people from death row to eat. It sounds really messed up because it is really messed up. It's a great thriller series if you're looking for something that's a little bit left of center. I always get baffled by the fact that Jack Heath also writes middle grade fiction um, because the fact that a mind can come up with middle grade children's stories and then write this is crazy. So if you haven't heard of Jack, Th Jack Heath and you're looking for a new thriller, definitely check this one out. It is amazing. I can't really tell you too much about this particular book without giving away previous books. They can be read individually. You don't have to read them as part of a series, but I do find it's better experience if you read one, two, and then three. Now let's get into what I read for my pick pong books. First up, I read The Dry by Jane Harper. I wanted to get this one read pretty early in the month because... My parents were coming to visit and I wanted to go and watch the movie with them at the local cinema because it was showing a screening of it. So I was really, really excited to get this one finished. Absolutely loved it. If you're looking for an Australian drama slash crime novel, I guess you could say, um, then definitely pick this one up. Jane Harper's a great writer and this story definitely takes you on a wild ride. It keeps you guessing until the very end and it's really well written. It does, it 100% does definitely paint the picture of a drought and the dramas and mental health issues that happened around drought in Australia. If you are unfamiliar with the dry, it follows the story of a police investigator by the name of Aaron Falk. He grew up in a small town out in the middle of nowhere where it's very like a farming rural town. There was a crime that was committed almost 20 years ago he was a suspect in that crime, but it was never completely solved. He's now gone on to become a police officer, and there's 20 years in the future, and a family, which is his best friend from childhood, has been murdered, and he has to come back and solve the crime of that murder, and then ends up also investigating the previous crime, and then everything kind of unfolds from there. So it's kind of like a who done it multi-generational thriller in the middle of Australia and drought is probably the way I would describe it. For my TBR vet, I read The Lovers by John Connolly. This was one of my 12 books that will self-destruct in 12 months books. So it was really nice to cross this off the list. However, it was really, really hard for me. I almost DNF'd this. I was not enjoying it. And I just it's not memorable. I didn't feel like I enjoyed it. It is one of those series where it's like follows the same detective for like quite a few books and this isn't the first one. So there was a lot of hints and previous kind of implications to previous books. So I wasn't a fan. I don't like reading detective series if I haven't read the previous ones even though it can be read as a standalone and to be honest with you I finished this in the first two weeks of February and I don't even remember what happened. For a standalone I read Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. This was a, was a surprise for me. I was expecting it to be a quick and easy read. I was expecting to semi enjoy it but I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I was expecting and I have a newfound respect for Matthew McConaughey after reading this book. There was a lot of parts of his life and his childhood that I didn't even really know about. Obviously I hadn't gone looking but there's a lot of things he's done in his life that make me appreciate him a little bit more. He's kind of known as like the joke star when he does a lot of his roles so it was interesting to see a serious side of him in this in this 
autobiography. I will say there is obviously a lot of his humour mixed through it and I did listen to the audiobook of this one so I was able to hear him read the story the way that it was meant to be read which was quite nice. Uh, so if you're a fan of Matthew McConaughey or remotely interested in his life I can recommend that you should read this one. If you can't stand him I wouldn't read it because it is very very much ingrained with Matthew McConaughey throughout the entire book. For first in a series I read Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. This was also a buddy read that I did with a friend of mine and it's probably my favourite book of the month. I had a really good time reading this one and I had almost given up on Cassandra Clare and the Shadowhunter world after reading book four in the um, Mortal Instruments series. But after reading this, I'm kind of keen to keep going and read this and read the Dark Artifices and read her new stuff. So I'm excited to pick up book two in this series and I definitely think I'll enjoy it. I'm not really going to tell you what this one is about because a lot of people already know about it. It's been out for so long. It's very, very well known. It's very popular. I mean, the Shadowhunter hashtag on Instagram has like 4 million posts. So it's very well known. Now there was a couple that I didn't get to that I unfortunately failed pick pong with and that was my 2020 release that Anthony picked for me which was When I Was 10 by Fiona Cummings. I unfortunately um, just wasn't really feeling it at the time. I was running out of time to finish books at the end of the month and I really wanted to complete another buddy read that I was doing of um, Crown of Feathers by Nick Paraputo with somebody else who watched my YouTube channel and wanted to buddy read it together. And then I also wanted to do To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Krista Paolini. Um, and I was running out of days, so I just decided to pick up those final two and call it a day at the end of the month. So that didn't get read, and I also didn't read um, The Book of Summer by, I can't remember her name, as, again, just ran out of time. So they're the two that I failed on Pig Pong. Uh, at the moment, as I'm filming this, I haven't finished To Sleep in a Sea of Stars or Crown of Feathers, so I will add an update soon. So editing Crystal here, I never actually recorded an update for later in the month for To Sleep in a Sea of Stars and the um, Crown of Feathers. And that is because I didn't finish them. So I am halfway through To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. I am really, really enjoying it, but I have left the second half because I wanted to get through my March pick pong before I continued it because I'd already failed my February pick pong and I didn't want to fail my March one. So I was like, I'm going to finish my March one and then pick this up at the end of March or during like Becca's Bookopolathon or something because half books, half finished books can be included in that. So that's where I'm up to with Christopher Paolini's To Sleep and Steve Does. I'm absolutely loving it. Don't get me wrong. It was really hard to put down, but I just wanted to kind of like prioritize and not have to take a punishment again. So really loving it. It is fantastic. It is a really cool story of kind of like different sci-fi than I am used to. It is very, very sci-fi. So if you're not a sci-fi fan, I probably wouldn't recommend this one. Uh, but it kind of was really cool to read. It feels like I am in the future, traveling in space, fighting aliens, and it's just really well done and really, really well uh, researched, I would say. It's really well researched, yeah. Um, so yeah, that is where I'm at with that one. As for Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palprito, the person I was buddy reading this with DNF'd it uh, before I even had a chance to start it. And that kind of removed all motivation I had to want to read it and try and push through it in the month of February. I do eventually still want to read this, so it's ending up back on my shelf. I may pull it out at a pick pong at a later date or just choose to read it at a later date. I am still excited to read it, but because the person I was buddy reading with it DNF'd it, I kind of lost motivation to continue it. So that is my update for those two books that like I hadn't finished or was planning on finishing at the month in the end, but didn't actually end up finishing. So don't really have much more of a review for you because I didn't read this at all. I didn't start it and I'm only halfway through the other one. So yeah, so that is what I read in the month of February. I didn't do too well in the month of February. I usually read about 13 books a month and this month I managed to do nine. 
I think nine was my total. I don't, I couldn't even tell you. Um, so yeah, that is where I'm at. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, happy reading.